Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, previously on Backpack Fishing with Two Rods. Because there's another one hooked up on a piece of bread intended for roach. A long brown trout there, and you know Graham's saying, as English as a Spitfire. It's an absolutely cracking brown trout. Twitching. Twi oh, 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 jeez, I've got a booty and a take. I've got a, I'm sure that's a take, I'm sure that's a fish. Fish on, fish on. Twitch sprat. I think, I think, I think I see the fish. I think I see the fish back down here to the right. A long, lean rainbow trout on a whole twitch sprat. My goodness me. How many trout are in this place? All right. Let's try again. There's an old sluice over there. Let's just try out on this, this piece. Now this looks a little bit deeper. This looks a hint, but you know, I haven't seen any small fish dimpling the surface or anything like that. So I do wonder what is in here other than trout. We know there's trout in here for any pike to eat. Not a bad depth there, not a bad depth to twitch. Not a bad depth. I'll spend five minutes here at least. That cast deserves a medal gram and a fish, both. So just twitch and I invariably get the pike hit on that drop, that slack, where I just ease the rod top. We must want to do a couple of pops, let it sink, couple of pops, let it sink. Invariably when you tweak it again is when they grab it. I've seen them follow it down as it drops. They're looking at it and you jerk it upwards and they go bam, grab it. Can be quite a fast take. Get it right there, now I'm gonna get that. Here's the hook, I'm just gonna get that rubber band over the top to help hold it on. Right, let's move on. This is very much a case of a pike, a pike, my kingdom for a pike. I'm actually not going to get rid of all my ground bait or through all these sprats, but I'm having a great day's fishing nevertheless. <coughs> Just uh, wrong target species. <coughs> Wider and slower up here. Ah, oh, here's a place that people fish. You see there, you have to look for it because it's all overgrown. It's just this little staging here for the fly fishermen to walk out on. Stop, cast, my goodness me, look how this has grown in. Now it goes Mr. Spratt. It's very, very shallow over there. And that rainbow rocketed in. I can see the shape of the fish coming in behind it. I thought, oh my god, it's about a three or four pound pike. Oh, the Spratt's come off. That means I've lost my rubber band. That's the situation where you've got to put that band over the hook. So you can see what you've got to do is just put a little tag of rubber band on there. If you've got a barbed hook, no problem. But if you're on barbless fishery, says barbless, put that little tag on there and that should stop them flying off. Right. No pike there. Time for a move along. I can hear rushing water. Some's going in a sluice down there. There's a sort of canal section over here. Guys are fishing down there. And what's this looking like here? Another fishy looking spot pouring through there. It's like a proper sluice. I can't see any fish other, other than trout being in there. I do not see a pike being in that little pool there, but I do see the possibility of a trout liking it. I don't think I'm going to bother with that. I'm going to have a look here. What have we got here? Oops. Hmm, all looks fishy, doesn't it, guys? All looks fishy. I think I'm going to look at this canal first. Let's go around here. Ah, this is a canal section. I call it a canal section. Let's check it out. It's a real, real vintage. Oh, it's coloured. That's interesting. That is peculiar. Coloured as you like. That shows you, look at these old wheels. Absolutely. Don't go through it, Graham. That's pretty cool, isn't it? 
hope you guys can see all these screws. Obviously these get opened when the river's in flood. That goes down to feed all the fishery down this side. And I guess this is a release area. Whoosh, they let it all go through here. I wonder, would there be anything in here? Again, all this sort of area looks very perchy. I don't know what depth there is. Probably silk. No, it's very shallow, but... Listen, I've got polarising glasses and I can... I can still see my... My sprat just popping under the surface and flashing. I'm just watching the line go slack. No, very shallow. Very shallow. Be able to cover most of this. Quite quickly, I think, because I can... Hopefully twitch it a little bit faster. And they'll still see it, that's the thing. With coloured water you need to be a little bit slower with it, but I want to keep moving, moving, moving. You can see I'm fan casting before I move. So I go one, two, three. Got to be prepared for the snatch take here, big time. Don't lift it out till you can see the sprat. That looks very fishy. I've got a feeling I'm probably going to lose some rigs here as well. Some of these trees up here in storms are going to uh, go into the water because this obviously doesn't look like a sort of trouty section. It's probably not going to be any management going on up here really. See a small fish rising down there. Now that could be coarse fish, small coarse fish. I like that bay. I like the look of that bay over there. Now I think the pike are more likely to feed on regular small sized roach and coarse fish than they are those trout. Big pike obviously feed on trout because they did have whack the protein on. Now that's barely two feet deep, three feet. Not just had a pick up guys. I was up there just below that sluice and a tiny tiny pike grabbed the sprat. And now I've got, I think, a bump here. Probably. Let's check that drag's pretty tight. He's marching off with it. I'm guessing it's a small one. He's had long enough to eat it now. Oh, he's actually right down there, guys, and there he is. Oh, oh, target species achieved. I did have it down as a small one, I have to say. I did have it down, but there you go. A weensy burger of a pike. So there's 10 brown trout, one really nice rainbow trout, and if I can get this guy here unhooked. Oh, he's gone right in the scissors. Brilliant. Look, got the hook out with the forceps, and I even got, you can see that there, my little rubber band back. Well, there you go. A baby pike, nevertheless. I'll tell you what, a big pike would eat you, no problem. Let's get him back. Go on. Ah, oh, there is hope. There is hope for me. I'm not sure if I've got a pickup down there or not. It felt like I pulled into a snag. No, I don't think it is. It's not even moving. No, it is. Oh, yes! Decent pike, guys! Decent pike. <laughs> Do you know what? I thought that was a snag all the way. I thought that was a snag all the way. I had that down as a load of bubbles came up close in. So, a decent pike. Well, well, well. Wonders never cease. What a day. A load of bubbles came up and I thought I pulled into a log. He's just hooked in the scissors. Hopefully I can get him out for you. He's in. He swam the wrong way. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. That's okay. I forgot to bring a way mat with me. I'm going to keep him in the net. There's the hook taken out by hand. No, you don't. I know. I know what you're going to do. Turn you around that way in the sun. There we go, guys. A proper pike. Not a monster. He's got food in his belly. I can feel it. Lovely in the autumn sunlight. A decent pike. I'm pleased with that one. Especially if I thought it was either 
a log I'd snagged into when I saw the bubbles come up. It's like one of those alligators in the alligator gator films, swamp people, that sort of thing. Great fish, let's get it back. Well, well, well. That slower water appears to be what Mr. Pike likes. Now, another reason I like fishing, it's unzipped a bit, at uh, early in the season like this, is what we call early in the pike or predator season, is because you're trying to beat the autumn leaves coming down. You can see there's tons up here to come down. So if you've got slow moving, well, even fast moving for that matter, but it does go through quicker, slow moving leaves can stop the line going through the water properly so you're not in contact with the bait. It can be really annoying, you can't do anything about it. You've probably got two months of it, but if you get in sort of middle, middle-ish autumn, that sort of time, you can get some predator fishing in on slow waters, canals, and places that have got overhanging trees and bushes that are going to lose their deciduous leaves. And you can often pick a few fish off, as is happening today. Now in about two weeks time, this will be smothered and it'll pretty well be unfishable. Then the next time you'll be able to fish that will probably be, I guess, in about Christmas, when all the leaves have gone, sunk to the bottom. But of course that can also start getting a bit sort of what we call acidy and putting the bait fish off because all those leaves rot on the bottom and that in turn can put the predators off. So sort of balance is a good time and I find it's the start of the pike fishing season, predator season and the end of the season. Either end is when I like to do most of my predator fishing. We can see a huge amount of leaves here. It's just annoying when you're, uh, if you're ledger in a big dead bait it's probably not a problem because your line sunk. If you're float fishing, not so great. Can't see a float and very often the leaves build up on the line and drag the float out of position. Quite annoying when you want to stay in one place. Haven't had any more takes here so I'm probably going to leapfrog away further down a lot quicker. I'm waiting for a huge big eruption by my feet. Just doing that like that. Oh my god. It can be exciting. Just tweaking away like that and one about 8 or 10 or 12 pounds smashes it. He says hopefully. Let's give it a couple of seconds to sink. See how the leaves are catching the line already. So we give it an extra, extra hard tweak just to get that down through the surface so that I'm in con oh I thought I had a bump then so I'm in contact with it wait a minute wait a minute that might have been a bump that might have been a log where I was talking no it's not it's a fish it's a baby fish a baby pike heading to the right now I'm going to give him a few seconds to just get that in his jaws just as I was talking then talking about Fishing with a line down between the leaves, lo and behold, pike takes it. And if he comes off, look, I'm not really bothered he's going to be a small fish. I can normally tell when they shake the head, and it is indeed a not so small fish. Oh well. Yeah, it's a small one basically, but not a, not a tiny weensy one, not like a pound. This is quite a pokey rod, this one. You can see I could actually tell the size of the pike that took the bait. As I tightened up on him, I could feel the way he moved off. I've had another small one, by the way, guys. There we go. He's in. So that's pike number four. He's indeed a small one. And there's my hook. That's pretty well taken in the same sort of area. There he is. Good man hooked. It's only a small chappy. He's still got a mouthful of my sprat. And I don't mind... He deserves that meal. Away he goes to be eaten by a 30 pounder. So here we go. In through the bottom of the jaws, right coming up between the eyes. And then my little cut off section of rubber band just snipped on there. Like that. And I got the shot right there. Pike will eat the shot as well, don't worry about it. Don't let it keep you awake at night. Don't read the books. They eat everything. And of course that also stops it snagging on the bottom as well. Here is a really good pike spot under there. Possibly if there's a bit more flow. This looks fairly static. Well, we got that last take on camera, guys. Oh, I'm quite happy with that. 
The previous one I thought was a, a log turned into a pike, so it's, it's all looking good. Just need to increase the size somewhat. Don't bother casting if you've got leaves on the uh, fish. Out we go, right to the far side. Now margins, margins are always good, along here, trees, all along the front of here, they lay along the edge and go out and pounce. Of course the same can be said for the other side, so don't neglect far banks. Don't go out of your casting area, your safety area, and start snagging up, because you don't want to be doing that. But if you are confident casting, then definitely that far bank will be another place to get potential hits. And, oh, I saw the flash. I saw the flash, guys. I saw the flash of the fish. This is a bigger fish. Absolutely beautiful. Ho, 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 ho. Check drag. It just came up and boiled on it. I didn't even feel a tug. Luckily, I dropped the rod and slacked him back. I'm just going to try and tighten that. He's going to the right, which means when I strike, I want to pull back to the left. Here we go. What do you think? Give it a go. We were, oh, poof, oh, mama. Different size, different size creature. Different size creature, boys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a better fish. There we go, there we go. Don't fall off. I nailed him pretty quick. This, I just saw the boil of the fish. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, please. This would be the icing on the cake. The rod might not be bent much, but it's a pretty pokey, stiff rod. That looks like a jumper to me. Or a cardigan, one or the other. Yes, sir. That's a nice pike. That's a proper pike. He's hooked in the same scissors as well. He's going to... Oh, he's got some power. He's got some power. He's peeling me out again. Peeling me out. Hopefully you guys are getting this. Now this is when I should have had the big camera, isn't it? Oh. Good fish, good fish. This is what I've been more interested in catching. A decent sized pipe for you guys. Holy cow, is he going? Or oh, what? I think he's down. Oh, great. Look at this fish scrap. Look at that pike go, boy. Okay. Net. That is a good scrapper. That was a sweet take. You guys wouldn't have seen it, but I actually saw the... I actually saw the flash of the fish first. Is he going to fit in this little net? Just. Okay, sweet delight, here we go. Let's see which corner that's gone in. Oh, how sweet was that getting that out? And I've got my rubber band back. I feel a proper viewing of this one, guys. There we go, guys. I've got guy's disease, it's terrible, I can't get rid of it. How about this one? A proper pike. Really pleased with that. Get that leaf off him. Got the big old jaws to tell you he can eat anything he wants to. That's good. Let's get this guy back. I'm trying to draw this one-handed. Just let him recover a minute. Oh, he's recovered. He is recovered. Does that look cool or what? Ultimate freshwater predator. Gone. Five pike, wow. Well, people, I have uh, had a good old go twitching right down to the other end of that canal bit. So five pike to what, just under, that one might have been, I don't think it was 10, not quite double figures, probably go nine, nine and a bit, and I'm back here by the bridge because this was traditionally where they used to get the big perch and they used to get some roach and it's just got that flow and look about it. Whether there are any trout still on the feed, I don't know, because they've had a good two or three hour rest. So I'm gonna finish off here I've had a hell of a day really. It would be nice to get a proper coarse fish to be honest. Well, we've got pipe, they're proper coarse fish, but lovely looking spot. But it just screams out roach to me, roach and chub. Let's see what we can get. 
Okay, people, here we go. Got to be in it to win it. And over there, the inside there, I guess on here on the left, it's not quite as strong as it is on the right. And the flow's coming around this way and going under the tree. We'll find out in a second. That looks very, very roachy. It's so lovely. You go with a lot lighter stick float through there, to be honest now. And the wind's off my back. Is it going to be a nice chub to finish the day? I think I'd even settle for a bream, to be honest. Mind you, you've got to draw a line somewhere. A river like this quality, you want roach or chub or barbel. I don't actually know if they've got barbel this far up. I can still see the float. There's a... No, I missed that, if that was a bite. Well, second trot down, guys. The float dithered like a roach, and it is indeed another brown trout. Number, wait for this, 11. Fish back. Quite, quite shy, two pounds. Scrappy two pounds. He's in. So we're still going on the trout. And those interested, it's just a piece of pinch flake on a size 12 just above the bottom. It's so fishy over there, it's so roachy and chubby, I can't tell you. It is wall to wall trout. As I was trying to describe earlier, there's a little bit of extra current going under the left hand side of the tree, but the wind's pushing me across, so I want it, that's where I've got it going there now. That's where I'd like to go, right, right under that. You guys can see that under that tree would be nice. Unfortunately, it's also big trout city. That feels like a big fish. He's peeling. He was peeling night. Oh, he's come on. That's not a bad thing in itself. That was a big fish. I don't think that was a chub because it was twisting and, and thrashing around. But they're going to get some more of the. Uh, they're going to get some more jungle juice, boys. Now's the time to feed them. Oh God! Here comes the gang. I really don't need the swans coming. Don't spoil my day, boys. Just shove off. Greedy thing. Go and see the queen. Oh, what a strike. A whiplash strike and the man's on again. Oh, yes. Oh, it's a good one. I'm going to take this one a bit, a bit lighter. The last one I was giving a bit of dingo to. Uh, probably. Oh, that's a silvery one. How many trout are in this place, for God's sake? And that poor man with a fly rod just wanted to catch one. And this is number 12. It's much bigger than the others. I thought it was a bigger one. Holy cow, he's going well, this one. Buckling this, uh, this match right over. He's in. Try again. Same spot. With that tip, caught so many fish that it's actually twisted up the line a bit. I'm still drawn under that tree. Oh god, it's just ridiculous! Absolutely, look, look, this is like a two and a half pound fish. Absolutely ridiculous. I mind the swim, I got the swim right for sure. That is ridiculous. 13, 13 brown trout. Do you know what, guys? I, I hate to think I'd move away from immense fishing like this, but... That's a good fish. That's a three-pound three brown there, guys. That is a three-pound brown, even if he comes off. That is a nice brown trout. Look at that one. That's like a sea trout, people. Look at that in the light. My goodness me, what a beauty. Is that not pristine? With that lovely English bridge in the background. Tell you what boys, that's a four pound fish when it's got some weight on it. Thirteen and county. So bread, hot dog segments, and an old frozen packet of raisins appears to be a major attractant. Good lord. 
don't think of uh, well I have caught that more trout than this I must admit but still pretty epic you guys probably won't see the float down there maybe you will maybe you won't if it goes about another four feet you won't see it at all because it's probably going to bury two feet to go one foot any time now appears to be the hot spot ah oh, there you go you see i've fed them off now i'm right under the tree where i wanted to be and missed the fish and cast my float right into the rushes i'm surely going to call it quits guys I've now cast as tight as I can over there um, to the corner. And it's, it's going under a superb. Uh, it's going under a superb bit, but I missed a bite there. Now, what's that? It's unusual to miss a trout because they're so greedy. Very unusual. I wonder if that was a chub or something. I'll try that run under there one more time in case that's a chub or roach i missed no trout taking it yet and i'm actually well well under that bush oh there's two i've missed there so it either shallows up or i'm missing fish right underneath the tree this time oh god i thought that was actually the bottom and it turns out it's a spotted roach. Big spotted roach by the feel of it. I mean, they do give you good scrap, don't they, on a match rod, but absolutely superb. My God, can you imagine if that was a roach? That'd be about four pounds. I'll probably end up with a pair of lips or one pulling it. That is right over in the snags. Don't say he's going to do me in the... I think I've got him inside. This one's going really well. Is this a bigger one? I'm going to bing it off for a minute, guys, because I don't want to run out of uh, card. I've already on second battery. People, if I get this one, it is definitely going to be fish of the day or throughout of the day. Oh, no, it's a chub. Oh, it's a chub. Great. Absolutely. I knew under that bloody tree. I knew it. It's a big ass chub. Oh, please don't go in the weed. You know what chub are like? He's in it. That is a big chub, big chub, big chub. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Holy smoke. Oh, get in. That beats all those trout to death. Here's a fish, boys. Here is a fish. Here is a fish. That could possibly be. Show me I didn't bring my mat with me. OMG. What a session. This, people. Oh, I'm so pleased with this. Of course, that's not going to be my last cast. It's about to tip down. Yes, look, I think that's a nice side of him. This fish, this got to be five pounds. I'm telling you, easy. Anybody's money, boys. Anybody's money. What do you think out there? That's what I would call a chunk of a chub. What a day I've had. What I've had. 14 trout, a rainbow trout, five pike to nearly doubles, and a chub that must go nearly five. From raisins, saveloys, hot dogs, and mashed bread. That's really sick, isn't it, when you think about it? Brilliant. Absolutely made a trip for me, this one. Just check that one out again. That really is an animal chub. Oh, oh my word. Oh my word. And you got that big. That's five. That's easily. That might be a touch more. Turn him up the right way. Let him recover. Away you go, buddy. Right, I knew that tree looked so chubby. I mean, you guys must have got fed up when we keep saying, oh, it looks chubby. Oh, it looks chubby. It's really roachy. It's really chubby. Really roachy. Really chubby. Get in. With a view like that, people, I've had a fantastic day. The sun has just come out. As you can see, what a setting. So pleased with that chub. Because there are some good coarse fish in here. There's definitely some specimen coarse fish in here, but I'm not a specimen hunter. I'm just catching what I catch. So, hope you've enjoyed tagging along with me on this trip. I've enjoyed having you along 
Maybe I'll do it again, just put the head cam on, it's much easier. And you see the sort of fish I can catch if I don't lug that big camera around because I don't have all that equipment and tripods and whatever. With the head cam, I can actually fish with both hands and feed. And that's the most important thing, keeping that feed going. That's what's done me today and held me in good stead. So, very windy. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't forget to watch Mike's TA Outdoors, Totally Awesome TA Outdoors Show. We'll see you next time. And yes, I'm going to have one more cast. As the sea suns fade